Hi guys, I'm sat here with Liquid Scoom at PGI Berlin 2018. Mate, how's it going? It's day five. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself to the camera and give us like your impressions of Berlin so far in the tournament? Yeah, I'm uh, obviously Liquid Scoom, Karen Prescott from Gibraltar, and uh, yeah, I mean Berlin has been really awesome. Except for the weather, it's been really warm this past week. And it had 35 yesterday. Yeah, and it's been pretty warm in, in the venue itself as well. So it's been, uh, kind of been a little bit uncomfortable. I don't really like the heat, even though I live from Gibraltar, which is kind of a warm uh, country. But uh, it's been great so far. I mean, uh, the arena is actually awesome and playing in LAN and against uh, all these international teams is just incredible, yeah. And I mean, let, let's talk about that for a second. Uh, you being from Gibraltar, mm -hmm. we saw the flag draped over your shoulders, of yeah. course, uh, when you were on stage at the third person ceremony. Uh, were you born and raised there? Do you still live there? Like, what's, um, what's it like living in Gibraltar? D is there much of an esports community? Are you, are you a bit of a lone wolf? T talk us through <laughs> what, what it's like living there. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've born in Gibraltar and raised there, and I still currently live there. Um, it's a really uh, small place. There's only like 30,000 uh, people that live in Gibraltar. It's like seven kilometers squared it's just a massive rock with uh, with houses around it uh, yeah. it's, it's a really small community but it's a really awesome community I mean I love being there I'm really proud of being Gibraltarian and uh, as in terms of esports there isn't really too much of esports scene I mean there's a few people that play like a lot of console games and some do play PC but console is more console heavy okay. uh, but there's like slight like esports scene as in like they like watching it and stuff like that but it's very very minimal there's like very little people but uh, most of them over there like are really supportive of me because I'm the first ever like Gibraltarian playing in events like for prize money and stuff like that so it's like a real honor and yeah I was wearing the flag obviously because I'm, yeah. I'm proud and uh, you know showcasing Gibraltar in the map you know because we're such a small place that not that many people know it so you know I, I wanted to wear the flag and, and showcase that yeah. And one, one of the other big events, of course, uh, in Gibraltar every year is the uh, is the chess that mm -hmm. goes on in the Coletta. And yeah. ap apparently we both play as well. Yeah. You used to be you used to be quite some player. Do you want to tell us a bit about your history? Uh, yeah, I mean, I used to play chess when I was younger. I mean, I think since I was kind of born, my dad lo loves playing chess and he got me into it. Uh, and I played pretty much until like I was 12, 13 years old. And that's until I got my, into PC gaming and then I switched from <laughs> yeah. chess into PC gaming. But uh, yeah, I used to like playing chess, but I was never like, I mean, I was one of the best like in Gibraltar at my age back then, but uh, I was more like, you know, amateur level. I wasn't like pro or anything like that. I just, the way I played was more like adaptability. I didn't really go into too much depth of strategy and stuff like that. But uh, I was like pretty decent on just like adapting and just playing on the fly kind of thing. Yeah. So three three minute challenge on stream sometime. <laughs> I'm down. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't played in years, but uh, it would be interesting to to play again. Yeah. Well, speaking of mind sports, of course, uh, it's not just chess you're playing. Apparently, you're finishing the PUBG event here in Berlin, and then you're flying off to play poker. Yeah. You're literally doing everything. What's your What's your history with poker, man? Yeah, I got into poker. Um, right uh like when i got 18 obviously because that's the legal age but that's when i actually found poker as well at the same time um because i was playing a lot of video games uh when i was from 13 to 18 i was playing a lot of video games and i played them uh, like pretty competitively pretty high level but i never got into like the esports scene and that was like the dream for me to get into the esports scene to to basically make a, a living of playing games that, that was my dream i didn't want to work i want to like enjoy what i'm doing right like yeah, sure. so i always tried to pursue gaming but i never really found any game that uh, like Got, was for me right so when I got to 18 I found poker I was like and I saw a friend of mine um, uh, well not a friend of mine Afin you, I don't know if you know him he used to play World of Warcraft he got into poker and I used to love watching his videos and I saw that he was actually making pretty decent money at poker I was like yeah maybe this is a career path it's kind of like gaming it's a game you know it's cards so I got into it when I was 18 and I got hooked it's, it's really fun I love the mind games I love the strategy I love the theory crafting of poker and uh, uh, yeah I was playing online poker professionally for like two years almost uh, from 18 to 20 years old and uh, I was pretty decent in that went pretty well and then you know I, I eventually went back into gaming and tried to pursue that again but uh, it's pretty crazy that I went from chess poker and now to PUBG yeah. we spoke about that and I feel like the skill sets of each of those games kind of like developed to help a good PUBG mindset in my opinion and, and like strategy thinking so it's pretty cool. So what did the transition from semi-professional poker or professional poker to back into gaming and esports look like for you? Because obviously the world's best poker players make an awful lot of money. Mm -hmm. They can have a really amazing career. What was, what was the spark that went, actually, now my heart's definitely in gaming? Uh, it was more like whenever I was playing poker, I used to play like, let's say, 10 hours a day. I, I would grind, right? I would notice that I would reduce the hours of poker and play games on the side. So yep. I, was, I was becoming like playing video games more than I actually was playing poker because that was that is actually what I enjoy the most even though I really love poker I think it's awesome 
I sell more poker as more as a hobby than a full main like main focus, sure. right? Okay. So. Yeah, yeah. Like my main focus was video game. That was like my true passion. And uh, I just went back into it. I got into like streaming a little bit and then I got into competitive PUBG. And now of course you're here with Team Liquid. Mm -hmm. Team Liquid holds a little bit of a special place amongst uh, teams that are in esports worldwide, yeah. not just where the organization is based. What is it like being a part of Team Liquid? And specifically, what have you noticed are like the differences that really make it special about being TL? Uh, as opposed to say another organization it's just the the whole like vibe and family feel in team liquid uh, like from the owners to the managers and everything they're just super nice uh, super caring of us and uh, it's just a, a great honor to be a part of team liquid i mean they're one of the biggest organizations in the world they've won dota 2 championship international last year they have uh, a really good track record of every esports like team they've had in every game so for, for me it's just a, a great honor and like our bosses victor and and and, and Steve are just really supportive, like incredible supportive. And it feels more like it's just a family more than, you know, like it's a, you know, your boss and like literally what you do. And it's more, but for, for, for me, it's just, it's, yeah, it's just great. It's, I'm part of the family right now and I, I couldn't be prouder. Even if I wasn't a player, I would love to be in their team, whatever it would like be a manager, a coach, or anything like that in the future. I, you know, I'm, I'm liquid for life, yeah. Nice. <laughs> um, so I could maybe moving on to a little bit about PUBG. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really interesting at PGI, we've seen third person, first person, Miramar, Erangel. So like, it's nice to see the variety and all sorts of stuff being tested out. Yep. Do you have any initial views on how that's panned out and how, how things have gone? Do you, uh, not your results specifically, but the fact that tournaments are branching out on doing these kind of things? Wow. What's your stance on that? Um, my stance uh, initially was, I feel like there needs to be a unified, um, like, rule set as in like you know a specific pers perspective like first person and third person is two mm -hmm. multiple ones but uh, i completely understand that you know in the asia scene and uh pubg cop still want to like this is a first ever event right so they want to see what is the future of pubg so obviously they're providing all this variety like you mentioned third person first person miramar and wrangle and i think in that sense it's really awesome uh obviously eight games in both tournaments i feel like that's a very little amount of games and obviously in the first person we play miramar and it's only one game per day, so it's only two out of the eight games that you play Miramar. So it's really, <clears throat> it's really hard to adapt to just one game per day because, uh, let's say, a team, for example, drop in your city, and the next game is going to be a wrangle, so you don't see them again until tomorrow. So sure. it's, yeah, it's yeah, hard yeah, to yeah. like do uh, adaptations and stuff like that. So hopefully in the future, we won't get one unified uh, rule set, like first person or third person, whichever they want to go. I feel like it's mainly first person. I believe it's most skillful. I think every other team here mostly agrees as well. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully we go with that, and then instead of eight games, we go for 16 games, so you add both of them together and go for eight games Miramar and eight games Wrangle. So sure. you have more variety of people watching the maps. Or 16 on Sanok. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about Sanok yet if it's ready for, uh, for squads. But yeah, I mean, whenever they add new maps and stuff like that, I'm, I'm always down to, to try it out and see how it goes. But um, hopefully we, we get a good variety and a good structure for the future. Cool. Mm -hmm. Well, last question about PUBG. You guys had a rocky start. Uh, on day one mm -hmm. on Miramar and then you came back really nicely actually to be in a nice position in the leaderboards now when you start uh, badly like that whether it's bad luck or otherwise does that necessarily change the game plan do you go right here's plan b here's what we're going to do differently or do you resolutely stick to what you originally went for uh, we resolutely stick to what we go for I mean I think this is the first time ever in a LAN event that we do a really bad a game we've been to four LANs now where we the first game is really bad like 18th place so it's literally like last we didn't get any kills either I believe uh, so for us that was a good experience like we even if we had bad games after that we were talking about and come straight after that game like this is a good experience for us even if we don't do well like we already came second place in third, uh, third person we already like proved ourselves so for us if we did have bad games straight after that, it would be an experience going into day two, starting in a bad position, because we've never experienced that. And I think that's good for the future for more tournaments cool. to experience uh, bad luck or bad plays in the start and how you mentally grow from that, right? So, because we normally liquid first days, you know that, right? We have like two or three wins in the first exactly. day, in yeah, the first yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. So, so you always come in with a high, but this time it's like, yo, we started bad. But uh, yeah, we, we got 18th place in the second game. We would just stick to our game plan. We know Arangel. It, it was kind of a shame because we had to fight Picardo and Miramar. That's why we probably did bad. Uh, we we, we kind of like wiped the team in scrims, but they came Picardo anyways. But uh, yeah, I mean, we, we came into Arangel and like we completely reset. That's a, something a strong point of our team uh, is our like strength to reset. And we came, I think straight after that, we came like fifth place in that game. And then we got second and then we got sixth. So we got really good placements after that. We didn't have a bad day, but it's good, yeah.
Great. Well, that was absolutely fantastic. Appreciate your insights and really nice to get to know you a bit better and your background as well. Mm -hmm. um, before we sign off, do you have any messages for your fans, everyone watching today, maybe some of the Team Liquid family who follow other games and are tuning in to watch PUBG for the first time? What would you like to say to them? Uh, yeah, I mean, to our fans, like, thank you so much for supporting us. It's been crazy, the Berlin, uh, like... Not only like the Western fans that we already had, but like a lot of Asian fans. Uh, I, I unfortunately can't speak any Asian language. I can Google Translate and I post that on Twitter. <laughs> but uh, I would love to say thanks to to all the Asian fans and even like from every other country that support us. It's, it's just amazing. And from Team Liquid, like the the support from the organization, I, I really want to thank them for believing in this team. When we made the roster a few like six months back, I, I told them like this is a roster that's going to compete in, in the World Championships. We want to be one of the best teams in the world. So I, I really thank them for for backing me and and stuff like. Yeah, and you. thank you for the time as well for you. Great. Yeah, thank you very much. And guys, uh, this, of course, was Liquid Scoom uh, competing at PGI Berlin 2018. We'll see you for the next video. Take care.